Hey everyone, welcome to Hawks Tutoring. I hope you're having a great day. Today we are doing chapter 6i, question 10. So this is your implicit differentiation chapter, exclusive only to specialist students. All right, so you know, you should be quite excited doing this chapter because you know, it, it, is very, it is something very new. So let's get into the question. The equation of a curve is 2x squared plus 8xy plus 5y squared equals to negative 3. And already from this equation, you can see that if you were to differentiate it, you're going to have to use implicit differentiation because there's x and y all over the place, right? So implicit diff, we're going to have to use it soon, right? So the question says, find the equation of the two tangents which are parallel to the x-axis. Now, what does that mean? So find the equation, that's essentially telling us to find the linear line of the two tangents which are parallel to the x-axis. What does parallel to the x-axis mean? Well. The x-axis is horizontal, going this way, so right here. Parallel just means this right here. So your tangent line is like essentially a horizontal line. And it must have the form y equals to something. And then of course, there's two of them, so y equals to something else as well. So we got two y equals to something equations that we need to find. So if you want to find tangents, you know, every time you deal with tangents, normals, all that, you have to differentiate, find the gradient formula first. So to do that, we differentiate our equation of the curve. And in this case, I'll do it the long way. So d dx both sides. So if you're doing implicit diff, you have to d dx all sides, okay? Equals to d dx of negative three. And of course, you differentiate them in terms of x. So two x squared, you differentiate in terms of x, you will get four x. Just bring the two down, minus power by one, and that's it. Right, and then the 8xy, this one's a little bit tricky, okay? 8xy, you treat it as two functions. 8x as one function, call it function f, and y as the other function, function g. This is f times g, this is product rule. So if you're differentiating with product rule, then you have to differentiate them um, using that rule, obviously. So if you differentiate that, we, get, we should get f dash times g plus g dash times f. So let's have a go. What is f dash? Well, that's just differentiating 8x and you get 8. And then we times it by g. What is g? The function g is y, so it's just plus 8y, right? And then we have a plus afterwards. And then it's differentiate g dash. Now, what is g? g is y. How do you differentiate y in terms of x? Well, have a look over here, guys, for implicit diff. So d dx of y, right? How does that work? So another way of writing this, very smart actually, people who found this, um, the, mathematic, uh, the mathematicians, you can write d dx y as d dy y times by dy dx. And the reason why is the dy actually cancels out and you have d dx y, which is the same thing over here. But when you write it in this form, you can actually now differentiate the y because now it's in terms of y. And then all you have to do is just multiply by dy dx later. So this is how it works. We d dy, so differentiate y in terms of y, which we'll get 1. And then 1 multiplied by dy dx. So you actually just write dy dx, which will be your gradient formula, okay? So dy dx is the gradient, the one you want to find, right? And there we go, you get your dy dx. Of course, we're not done, we have to also multiply by f. So that's g dash, we did it over here. Multiply by f, which would be 8x. So multiply by 8x, and then you're almost done. Differentiate the 5y squared as well. And we do, we apply the same trick over here. So that is d dy of 5y squared times by dy dx, okay? It's the same thing all the time. So you differentiate the 5y squared in terms of y, you get plus 10y and then multiply by dy dx. There's no product rule here, there's only one function, which is 5y squared. And of course, d dx of a number, negative three, you always get zero. From this point on, you can definitely solve for the gradient formula, so dy dx, and in, that, in this case, dy dx, just going to group them together, we have 8x plus 10y, so I factorize dy dx out for these last two terms, and then I move the 4x and 8y to the right side, and we get negative 4x minus 8y. And then you're almost there, dy dx equals to negative 4x minus 8y, everything divided by 8x plus 10y. We simplify it to make it look nice, you know, and we get negative 2x minus 4y, so divide everything by 2, and this is 4x plus 5y. Okay, so you got your gradient formula, dy dx. Now, what is the goal? The goal is to find the equation of the tangent. What is the equation of a linear line or a tangent is always y equals to mx plus c, right? 
in this case we know it's parallel to the x-axis so you can automatically say that the gradient is equals to zero so m equals zero because parallel to the x-axis means flat your gradient is flat so m equals to zero and if that's the case you let this equation right here dy dx equals to zero so let dy dx equals to zero and if you do that guys what you get is negative 2x minus 4y over 4x plus 5y equals to 0. Your denominator just cancels out because if you multiply it by 0, then it becomes 0. And you're left with negative 2x minus 4y equals to 0. So if you want to solve that, then what you get is we bring the 4y over. So we get 4y equals to negative 2x. And then therefore, y is equals to negative x on 2. Okay, but then that still doesn't give us the answer. You know, you're like, yes, normally in methods, you'll get an answer like y equals to something or x equals to a number, right? Not in this case. In this case, you actually get another equation, which is y equals negative x on 2. Now, what does that mean? So that means that your gradient is flat. So for this equation right here, the 2x squared plus 8xy plus 5y squared minus 3, um, the gradient is only ever flat when y equals negative x on 2. So gradient is flat dy dx equals 0 when y equals negative x on 2. But our goal is to find a tangent line, right? So we know this is our gradient, but we don't know like a number, right? We, we need to find plus c as well. If you want to find the plus c, so yes, our equation is now y equals c, right? Because we made m equals 0. So if you want to find plus c, you sub in your y equals negative x on 2 back into the original equation, right? So that's when the gradient is 0. So you sub that back in and then you'll be able to find, you know, your y values. So let's do that. We sub it back in. So 2x squared is fine plus 8x. Um, whenever you see a y, we replace that with negative x on 2. And then that's plus 5 negative x on 2 square equals to negative 3 try to solve for it so that is 2x square minus 4x square and then negative x square so that's x square on 4 x square on 4 times 5 would be plus 5x square on 4 equals to negative 3 add them all up together you know um make them all have the same common denominator or get rid of this root uh the 4 on the denominator so multiply everything by 4 we get 8x squared minus 16x squared plus 5x squared equals to negative 12. 8x squared plus 5y squared, that is 13x squared. 13x squared minus 16 is negative 3x squared equals to negative 12. x squared is equals to 4 after we bring the negative 3 over. And therefore, x is equals to plus minus 2. Right, now you might think this is your answer, but we're not there yet. All right. We know x equals plus minus 2, then the gradient is flat. But we want the tangent. The tangent is y equals to a c, right? This is x equals to something, not y equals to something. So if you want to find the y values, you sub x back into your, you know, your y answer. So in this case, we know y equals negative x on 2, and then the gradient is flat. So if you already know your x value, then you sub it in. Sub x equals negative 2, and then sub x equals to... 2. So when you sub that back in there, y equals to negative 2 on 2, which is negative 1, right here, we just sub it back into this equation, and then y equals to negative, uh, well actually when you sub in negative 2, you get negative negative, so that's positive, so that's positive 1, and when you sub in the negative, uh, the positive counterpart, you get negative 2 on 2, so y equals to 1. And this is actually your answer. So the two tangents that we need to find are actually y equals 1, and y equals to negative 1, excuse me there. Right, so the logic behind this is it's actually a little bit more complicated with this question. Your gradient is flat, so your gradient is flat right here when y equals to this negative x on 2. Now, we don't have a number, right? Uh, we know our tangent has to be parallel to the x-axis, so that means y equals to c, or when the gradient is 0. We did that already. Now we need to find y equals c. What is the value of c? If you want to find value of c, then we know that the gradient is flat only when this happens, when y equals negative x on 2. You want to find the specific point when this happens, then if you want to do that, then you sub it back into the equation. 
so that you can find the y values afterwards. So you can find that y equals c, okay, so that horizontal line. And in this case, y equals plus 1 and y equals negative 1 after you found that x was these two values, okay? So when x equals to these two values, the gradient is flat. So when x equals to plus minus 2, the gradient is flat and the gradient is flat is what we want, okay? So that's how you do this question. So hopefully you found it useful. And if you did, leave a like. And aside from that, guys, thank you for watching.